You're listening to The Scrimmage with Daniel Hargrove and Justin Domashevitz. with another edition, an Andrew edition of Name That Mariner. Okay. And I have seven facts about this Mariner. Okay. And one crazy story. Ooh, good. I'm, I'm glad we're getting back to a crazy story. Yeah. I was bummed last week that there wasn't a crazy story to go along <laughs> and with it. So, so I tried to put these in some sort of order, but hopefully I didn't put the most obvious one first. <laughs> and with all of my excuses out of the way... Do you have a legal situation and need someone on your side? Let the law office of Jeffrey A. Domashevitz be your advocate. If you've been the victim of medical malpractice, suffered a personal injury, or need representation with real estate law, small business law, or estate planning, let Jeff Domashevitz put his 29 years of experience to work for you. Call Jeff Domashevitz today at 360-612-3991 or visit domashevitzlaw.com. That's D-A-M-A-S-I-E-W-I-C-Z-L-A-W.com. This player had originally intended to return to Washington State University, go Cougs, oh. for his senior year, but he agreed to sign with the major league team who drafted him after they promised that he would report directly to the big show. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. I thought that was kind of amazing because we've been talking about how Kellenic should be able to play. All right, I'm going to guess this guy because I think that I'm, he's from the Northwest. I'm not sure what college he went to or if he went to college because some of these guys go straight out. But Richie Sexton? No. Okay. It's not Richie Sexton. I didn't know he was from the Northwest. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. He's from Washington. Uh, in 1993, his breakout season in the major leagues, this player led the American League in batting average, intentional walks, Whoa. times on base, on base percentage, OPS, and doubles. All of those things? Yes. In 93? Yep. Oh, boy. Well, that takes out who I was thinking about before, I think, because I think John Olerud was a Cougar. So that was actually a top guy on my previous thoughts when you said Washington State. Did you say in the in the first question, did you say return to Washington State? So yes. he already he intended was there? to return to Washington State University for his senior year. So that so he already played there for a few years. Yeah. Okay. Gosh dang it. In this this hint, this current hint. Yeah. Uh he led the American League in batting average. Did I say American League? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Dang, this is this is really tough. Um Good. <laughs> oh wow. Ninety three batting average. American League. Gosh, everybody's... No, I can't guess that guy because I know that's not right. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm going to pass on that. I have. No, right. I don't know. I don't have a guess. All right, that's cool. Yeah. I, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, in 1999, this player appeared on the cover of Sports Illustrated with the headline, The Best Infield Ever? Along with his teammates, Edgardo Alfonso... Ray Ordonez? Ordonez. Ordonez and Robin Ventura. Wow. Um, That was one that I was worried you would know right away just because I felt like you would probably have those Sports Illustrated or something. Well, my brother did get them, but I think he was later when he was starting to get Sports Illustrated. Uh, But that sounds like White Sox infield. I'm not actually sure what team he was on at that point. Robin Ventura, (laughs) Ray Ordonez... That I mean, Frank Thomas? No, not Frank Thomas. I feel like that was a terrible guess. That was uh... Justin would have told me that was a terrible guess. I don't know if these are terrible guesses. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is tough. Uh, if 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 I if I recognize the name, then it can't be a terrible terrible guess. So <laughs> that probably was a terrible guess. All right, he is. I'm 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 skipping a few questions to. Get, I think this one. I think this one will start to give you the. <laughs> he is one of only 26 players to ever hit for the cycle multiple times in their careers. Oh, no. What? <laughs> this is an infielder. Breakout season in 93. This is ridiculous. Um, 
I'm gonna feel so stupid at the end of this, I bet. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you a little bit of facts about him. I'm going to pass on this okay, one as well. Pass on this, one? Okay. this is really Okay. Um, this is a good one. As a true freshman, this oh. one's more difficult. This yeah, is just going to make it even more difficult. Yeah. So I won't I won't make you guess after this one. As a true <laughs> freshman in 1987, he hit 414 with 5 home runs and 20 runs batted in. Go Cougs. As a pitcher, he went 8 and 2 with a 3.0 ERA and was an All-American. So he pitched also it, in ba- in in college. Did I not guess John Olerud? <laughs> you you ruled him out earlier. It is John Olerud. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm an idiot. The last that the last was literally had, my first. That was my first thought. <laughs> and Why the, did you rule him out? I, I didn't understand, remember. but I was trying to keep my face hidden behind the screen. I ruled him out because I thought it was too early. Yeah. That's what I thought. His freshman I, year in college was the year I was born. Dang. He's way older than I realized he was. Yeah, so that's what, because I thought 93 would be too early, because I remember watching him play in the 2000s. So, but as soon as you said pitcher, because I knew okay. that he pitched and and hit in well, so at Wazoo. The only one of these I could have gotten it I at knew. the first one. <laughs> The only one of these that I actually knew was that he he was I knew that Olerud had hit for the cycle more than once. Okay. So so then when I saw that he was one of only twenty six players to hit for the cycle, I was like, oh cool, that makes sense. Yeah. Um. But uh, that was like the only thing I knew about him. I actually didn't even remember this, although I sh- I feel ashamed that I didn't remember it. The last hint I had for you is that he wore a batting helmet on the field. Yeah. As a precaution due to an aneurysm that he suffered at age twenty. And here we go with the crazy story. His freshman season, we talked about his freshman season, right? Yeah. yeah. His freshman season, amazing, 414, four, 8 and 2 as a pitcher. In 88, so his sophomore season, he hit 464 with Jeez. 23 home runs, 81's, 80, 81 RBIs, RSBIs, Jeez. Uh, 108 hits, 204 total bases, and an 876 slugging percentage. Dang. As a pitcher, he was undefeated, 15 and 0, <laughs> with a 249 ERA and 113 strikeouts. He was consensus All American as both a first baseman and a pitcher, oh. and was named the Baseball America College Player of the Year. Dang. In 2016, he was named Pac-12 Player of the Century when the conference <laughs> released its all-century baseball team. So he's the he's the Pac-12 Baseball Player of the Century. That's insane. Uh, but the crazy after those first two years, yeah. So it, before the January prior to his junior season, January of 1989, he was running indoors on campus in Pullman, and collapsed. He was hospitalized in Pullman and airlifted to Spokane later that day, where he was diagnosed with a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is bleeding into the spinal column, apparently. Whoa. So he, re- he was in the hospital for two weeks after the seizure, and he lost 15 pounds, but he was back in class by the end of that month. A few weeks after that in Seattle, further examinations revealed a brain aneurysm. And he underwent surgery in late February. He returned to action for the Cougs in mid-April. So late February, he had surgery on his brain. Yeah. Mid-April, he got back to playing baseball for the Cougs, wow. where he hit 359 with five home runs and 30 RBIs, RSBI, during 78 plate appearances. That's insane. That is amazing. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. I knew that he wore a helmet, and I remember hearing that it was because of something that happened before but i didn't know the whole story behind it that is so also the part that threw me off with that 1993 thing and me thinking that was too early i had no idea he was that good i didn't that's that was the thing that like, i was reading through these i was like i i liked john olerud yeah me he was too playing, but i had no idea he was that old or that good yeah we we saw him playing for the mariners in the twilight of his career that's crazy. Yeah. Like both of those things. So in 90, so your first qu- hint, I was like, oh, that could be John Olerud. And then for some stupid reason, <laughs> I said Richie Sexton. It's terrible. But then the next, that next hint completely threw me off. Completely, completely. Cause I had no idea he was that good in 
especially that early. Yeah. But that good was the main thing that threw me off. I was like, John Olerud didn't lead the major or lead, lead the, the American league. league. Yeah, the American League. In batting average and all those things. <laughs> Holy crap. That's amazing. Yeah. I I also thought it was amazing. And I'm glad that you didn't know all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried you'd be like, oh, yeah, John Olerud, he was this great player. Of course I know about him. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I still feel dumb because I didn't go with him because he was my initial <laughs> thought. But, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. So that was Stump Daniel brought to you by the law office of Jeffrey A. Jeffrey a. a. Dama <laughs> Dama Dama Shevitz. Some people have called it Dama Seawees. Dama Seawicks. But no, yeah. <laughs> it's Dama Shevitz. <laughs> <laughs>